Welcome to the Elder Scrolls Legend Central. I am Beaky with the Untitled Game Show YouTube channel. And for you guys today, we'll be taking a beginner's look at Soul Trapping and Soul Gem. We'll discuss how to actually go about and Soul Trap a card, how to get Soul Gems, and the best process to actually go about doing it to make it most fun for the game and the best way to do it efficiently. We'll go over every single method and then we'll talk about what is best as well. So first of all, I just want to point out, right now I have 34 out of 52 legendary cards available in the game. I did not get most of these legendaries from open up packs. I'm just not that lucky. Most of these cards that are legendary that I have gotten is due to the fact that I've actually soul traps common cards, rare cards, or epic cards and turned them into legendary creatures. And then we're going to go about the ways to actually soul trap a card right now. Then we're going to talk about other ways to get soul gems. So first of all, you need to go into your deck. We're going to go to my Gardener of Sword test deck. In this deck, specifically, we have a new card from the Madhouse Collection. His name is Gardener Sword. He gains an item every single time an item is equipped to another monster. So I want to have a card that really works well with him in this deck as well. So I want to go ahead and Soul Summon a really powerful card. So I have to go to, down to this little eye right here, which is called Soul Sight. You click that. Once you click Soul Sight, you'll see all the cards you're missing from that are available in the game. So here we go. We got. This really great guy right here which equips all creatures in a friendly lane with a random item. So he will combo really well with something like Gardener of Swords. So to get this creature to soul summon him, I right click and it'll say soul summon cost is 2000, 1200 soul gems. So if I have that much, which you can see from the bottom right hand corner right here, which is all your soul gems, I will be able to right click him and just go ahead and click soul summon. And that will turn all my soul gems into this card, which is a very powerful card. Let's say for whatever reason you made a mistake and soul summoned the wrong card, there is an undo button right here, which lets you undo the transaction you just completed. So it's very helpful if that actually happened, you accidentally soul summoned the wrong or incorrect card. So we got the card that we wanted. It's now been added to my deck. It will say new like it just did right there. And now we can add it to our deck and just press done. But there is a question, how did I get all those soul gems to soul summon that card? Well, let's do the process of soul trapping. So let's say I wanted to, for some reason, to get another one of this card right here. It's called uh, the Watchman. He's a very low cost card, right? He costs 50 souls to summon. If I wanted to get this card for some reason, even though it's just a common card, and I only have 10 soul gems right now, there's a few different process I could do to get some soul gems. One of the very simple ways to do it in very early on in the game is to head into practice mode. In practice mode, if you play a novice difficulty, you will gain 5 soul gems every single time you beat the opponent. Adept, 10. Expert is 15. And do note, expert difficulty is quite hard. The opponent and the AI here is very, very aggressive and it will try to kill you very quickly. So for beginning players, I would actually recommend to go with Adept before you step over to Expert because Expert is actually quite hard. The AI is pretty darn difficult in Expert. So that's one of the easiest ways to get soul gems early on in the game and you could gain up to 300 soul gems per day. So if I wanted to get the 50, 50 right now, even though I have 10, the best way for me to do it is just play four matches of Adept and that will give me 40 soul gems to summon that creature. The other way about it is to go into solo arena and as you go through solo arena after you either buy it using 150 gold coins or you can buy tickets. You go through the arena, soul arena, at the end, if you're lucky, you could get some soul gem. It's not always guaranteed you might get more packs than you would get soul gems. A more guaranteed way to actually get soul gems when you actually want to do a fight in other players is to go into versus arena. Chaos arena if it's available to you or versus arena both give you soul gems as reward. It ranges anywhere from 40 to 70, but it's not always guaranteed depending on how far you go inside the actual event. But the best actual way to get soul gems is literally well opening up packs so if you go through versus arena or arena in general you get packs and if you have packs which i'm just going to buy a bunch of packs right now just to show you guys what this is like and i do highly recommend you guys don't buy packs like this i would actually recommend you guys use your money to get into the versus arena or into solo arena play through the arena mode and at the end of the arena you could be rewarded with two to three packs anyways and you'll save more than versus buying a pack this way but i'm just doing this to showcase it right now as you guys see i have plenty of gold saved up 
So once you get some packs, whichever way you do it, whether you buy it with gold, whether you buy it with money, or whether you get it from Versus Arena, Soul Arena, or you play regular uh, casual or ranked matches and save up a lot of gold and buy your packs yourself, you open up your packs and depending on the cards you get, let's take a look what we get right here. We get the Tiger. These are all common cards right here, except for right here. This is actually an epic card. This is a, um, a rare card. So these cards right here are all copies of cards that I already own. So we will be able to soul trap these cards and gain some actual soul gems from these cards. And cards like Ice Storm right here, which I actually need a copy of this, I'm going to keep reinforcements. I don't need a copy of this, so we're going to soul trap it. So we're just going to keep on opening up packs right now. So the game actually encourages you to really open up a lot of packs, but doesn't force you to go about it in the sense that you have to spend real money. And what we just got right here was a lightning bolt, but it's a premium art. So premium arts have these kind of cool animations on it. And if you get one of these cards, they're really special because of the fact that they could be soul trapped for amazingly more amount of money than a normal version of this card, which is what I'm going to show you guys real soon. And we'll just open up the last pack just so I can show you guys what else we could get in this pack. All right, so we got all those cards right there. We got a lot of commons and some rare cards as well. And right here it says two cards. These two cards means I found two new cards for my deck that I never owned before. To see those cards, you would go over to intelligence because that's where the one is. You just go through your inventory of cards and just go until you see the card. And right here you see lightning bolt. The normal one and the new one. So if we wanted to soul trap this lightning bolt to help us get that little old guy right over here that we like, oh man, we really need this card, but he's like 50 for some reason. And I'm just using him as an example, guys. But we like we only have 10 right now. What we could do, obviously, is soul trap a lightning bolt just to say, even though lightning bolt's a real guy. But if we soul trapped it, we would only get five soul gems from this regular lightning bolt. But look at the difference on how much you get from a premium lightning bolt. You get 50. So that would give me more than enough to soul trap that card. So actually my biggest recommendation to you guys, and this is what I've done as much as possible, is to play arena solo mode in the beginning of when you start playing this game. It's very easy to win solo arena when you start playing and get a lot of packs for a very cheap amount of gold. You'll play some casual or some ranked matches, gain some gold, and then when you play solo arena, you gain gold back as well. You get packs, and if you get lucky, you'll get premium cards in those early packs. And I know it might be tempted to keep these premium cards, but I highly recommend always soul trap these premium cards right here like this. The effect goes ahead and happens and that gives you 50 soul gems right here now obviously if I wanted to get that amount of soul gems another way you could make this all simple by clicking this little arrow right here if you click that this soul traps every single copy of extra cards you have in your deck but it won't do the things like premium cards so like premium cards you're gonna have to go ahead and do it yourself unless for some reason you have more than three copies of a premium card and if you do that's pretty darn impressive so if I press this it will go through my deck and look how many co extra copies of commons I have or rare cards I have and soul trap them all together so what I'm actually talking about here specifically let's say let's see if I can show you guys a good scenario of this right here lightning bolt I have four copies Copies of lightning bolts I obviously only could use three copies of a lightning bolt in one deck so that extra one copy can be so trapped at no cost to yourself so if you ever see that you have four copies of a card that means that you go ahead and freely go ahead and soul trap one of those cards because you only could ever use three in a deck and you don't need four copies of the same as that card and that gives me an extra five and like I said the undo just click here and you can undo that and it gives you the card back just in case if you wanted to keep it so I'm going to show you another scenario, like I said before, about just wanting to explain exactly why. See, we have Thievery right here, right? And if you look up here, we have three copies of Thievery. This would make a fourth copy, but it is a premium card. So once again, if I press the little arrow down here in the bottom right, it would normally soul trap all the copies I have of this that card. But watch, I will soul trap all these cards, gain my soul gems. I have 185 here, but obviously thievery stays in here because it is a premium card and premium cards are counted on top of each other and not with the normal cards. So if I wanted to get rid of thievery, I would have to right click it once again and go ahead and soul trap it right here. And that would give me an extra 50 towards my pile. 
And another easy way to see how what type of cards you might want to soul summon, let's say there is a deck that I want to use for testing. All right, so we're going to go into my deck right here. And we're going to go to this little uh, uh, square right here. We're going to go to epic cards. No, actually, we're going to go to rare cards. Then with this open right now, we can look at all the cards that we currently don't own what are grayed out and we can see what kind of cards we can actually so summon from the ones we don't have right now so it looks like i have all the available at least that i need i'm trying to find something i don't have but i have a lot of cards in this game guys so do apologize for that i have most of the cards uh, all right so we go down there we'll go to oh, most of the rare cards we we'll go to epic i must not have some of the epics Okay, this card right here. Let's say if I wanted to get this card right here, he costs 400, 400 guys, soul gems to summon. I only have 235. Now here's where you're gonna start making mistakes early on in the game, and I did it myself. You might think it might be worth to sacrifice a high cost legendary that you might not be using right now. Let's say you might want to soul sacrifice a card like this, Vigilant Giant, because obviously sacrificing this one gives you 400 immediately. If I got that 400 right now from sacrificing this giant, I'll just do it to show you guys. We'll soul trap it. You're like, oh man, that's instantly 400. Okay, that's easy. Now I could go ahead and get. Right over. We'll go to epics now we could get him we could summon him immediately and be done but the risk of doing this is in case if especially when you're new in the game you are going to want to make a lot of different types of deck and know how different legendaries work so i don't actually very early on recommend you guys soul trap in any legendaries you shouldn't start soul trapping legendaries until you hit level 50 in the game unless this is the one unless unless you're sure you're just never going to use that creature there are certain legendaries that are better than others and you could be very confident you're not going to be seen in many different decks and i'll show you some of those legendaries that you could be more confident about soul trapping because a lot of people don't use it and they're not very great cards in general as legendary cards and you're probably going to get more down the line but i wouldn't I wouldn't like i said guys i would not recommend you guys just did what i just did by soul trapping in a card like this because this is actually a very very good card i would have undone that immediately if i couldn't but i'll get more of this and i don't use this in the current deck right now so that's why i did it that's just to show you guys because i could get another one of this if i really wanted it now soul trapping this guy to get uh, get enough soul gems to get another one of relentless raider would be more of a even trade like for me relentless raider is worth way more value than the one big giant because it's just a better overall legendary card so that's the stuff you're gonna have to learn with the game which legendary cards to soul trap and which not to but you always want to go about it when you're doing epic cards rare cards and common cards before you move on to legendaries you think very hard before you soul trap any single legendary and you can't put faith in that you're going to get the legendary you want from a pack it's very hard to get legendaries from a pack it is possible i've gotten them but there is no guarantee about that guys just be noted there is just no guarantee that you're going to get the legendary that you specifically want from a pack like i've wanted a staff of sparks and i just like haven't got one in a pack yet i've never had this card and i've wanted to try this card myself in my own decks in forever so there's a lot of situations like that. But before we get done with this video, I just want to give some general recommendations because like, I like making these videos a little long sometimes just so that you guys do really understand. If you're starting out and you get certain legendaries, which legendaries you should definitely keep no matter what compared to which ones you might want to soul trap because you might not need it in the long run as well. All right. Relentless Raider, always keep these cards a really good for, yeah, legendary. This is not a bad legendary whatsoever, but if you get it early on and there's another card that might be more valuable to you that you want to save up for in the epic or common, because Soul Trap in a legendary always is going to give you 400. That will allow you to get something like, uh, let's just go down to common. Common cards cost 50. That could get you four common cards, and that could get you... Um, two no, sorry, four common cards um eight common cards and two uh four normal rare cards and one epic so 
you got to be easy to think about it correctly. But going back to my point, definitely, I if I, if I had to pick one in the red that you could live without, it definitely would be him and the support card. These other ones right here are all valuable cards. Blood Dragon is a great card. I highly recommend you keep Blood Dragon. I would almost say this is essential legendary for this deck. It's very useful in many single type of decks. If you play with Orcs, this is a great card to have. This is a card that's situational. If you don't ever think you're gonna ever wanna play with Orcs, you might wanna Soul Trap this one. But just be noted, this is the important things, Orcs have gotten a lot more powerful because of certain cards added in the Madhouse collection. But if you never see yourself playing with Orcs, you might want to go ahead and Soul Trap the card. The Giant is the overall good card to have in this deck. This is a great card to have as well. This I don't play myself, and I don't see much people play it as well. So I would be more than willing to Soul Trap both this card and this card as unique cards as you only can have one of them anyways to fuel for other cards inside these types of deck. Moving on over to Intelligence. Intelligence is where it's a little tricky right here, guys. If there was any card I would Soul Trap if I got it right now, it actually would be the Staff of Sparks. It's not that the Staff of Sparks is a bad card, it's just it's an item, it's a plus six, it's plus three, right? It's a great item, but it's a very situational card because a lot of your opponents will go ahead and try to destroy the creature equipped with this card immediately. And because there's so many other ways to get this item through stuff like, um, I'll show you right now, in the Strength, all let's go over to plunge right here okay you're here plunder plunder lets you add two items to your hand and a lot of times when you plunder you might end up getting yourself a staff of sparks so if you get a staff of sparks from plunder then it really doesn't make no sense of keeping a card that causes sorry about that let's open this back up and go back to legendary that causes uh, right here causes six you know, it, it's cool that it costs a six and everything, but yeah, the cost on that is kind of crazy. So if anything, I would do this. I would keep Dragfall Mage. I you, I would say have three copies of this. I would keep Mentor's Ring if I had one. I would keep every other card in this deck. If there was one other one, it'd be him. He's not a bad card whatsoever, but he's a very situational card. And if your deck is not set up to actually eventually get to 11 Magic or to use it, you may never get this card in the field in the right situation anyway. So he's such a situational card that he's not essential to a lot of intelligence deck. He's not essential compared to her, which is I have two of her and I would use, use three in some situations. So right there, Staff of Sparks and him if you needed to sell, sacrifice any legendaries. And just the last thing, like you, you obviously, like I said earlier, if you get a premium version of a card, you get a lot more soul gems for sacrificing it. Yeah, so if you get a premium version of a legendary card, you actually can soul sacrifice it for 1200 soul gems. And just know about this though, guys, if I get a premium version of a... <laughs> legendary card unless it's a legendary card i don't already have i soul sacrifice it almost immediately because of the fact that it gives so much soul gems that i could probably get a uh, two to three other rare cards that i could use or epic cards that i need in my deck so these cards are usually always soul sacrifice for me unless i really need that card like in a scenario which you guys will see right here which is the only one i've kept like he is worth 1200 to soul sac soul trap I keep saying Soul Sacrifice, but it's Soul Trap. But I keep him because I don't have another copy of him. And it looks he looks kind of badass. I'm not going to lie. Premium art is premium. It looks pretty badass. So moving on from there. Over to Willpower. In the Willpower side of things, this is where people are going to probably be pretty upset with me. I say don't Soul Trap any of these cards. I think all the Willpower Legendaries, every single one is valuable in their own form in a Willpower deck. Like, if you had to, had to pick one, it'd be Renowned Liege, but he is useful because he summons another Grunt Imperial and he gains you health back. And I've seen him work out very well in decks. So yeah, and as you guys will see, I have three copies of this Legendary, this Legendary and this one because they're just so useful to me. And I just haven't gotten a chance to get Dawnbreaker. I've used it a million times through stuff like Plunder. And like I said, with Legendary items, sometimes you'll get it if you use a deck that has Plunder or you get it through his effect as well because when you break a rune, you get a random item. Because of that, I've been able to live without Dawnbreaker, but it's something 
I'm going to add to my deck really soon. So I don't recommend, unless you don't play with willpower cards, to sacrifice any of these cards. Because if you're playing with willpower, I can guarantee you sooner or later some of these are going to come in handy. Even Like, I've run three Dawn's Wrath and it's helped out. Like, this is, this is my... This... Three of these are in my Legends deck. My deck right here, Legends deck that takes me to rank every single month that I normally play for rank, has three of these because it's just... It's crazy. It's just like being able to wipe the field out is insane. It's insane. And here we go over to agility. Now agility is kind of funny because this is a situation where I'm probably going to differ a lot to a lot of other players. I don't think this card is essential whatsoever. A lot of players like it. It triggers all you know, last grasp abilities, but unless you're specifically building your deck around this happening, it's such a situational thing that playing in rank and casual that I would highly recommend if you get this legendary in any form, premium or normal, you could go ahead and soul trap it fairly safely because you don't want to, theming your deck around him is like kind of annoying to me. Spider, Dredra, this card needs a buff. Like this card needs a buff ASAP. I hope the developers are watching this. It having two defense is just not enough. It needs to have at least four. Come on, guys. Make it a 4-4-8 four, four, cost. Its ability is really cool where it summons a 2-1 spiders in every lane. It fills up the lanes. It's great, but it's just too easily to be killed by a firebolt or something else like that. I just needed to have some more defense, so I don't see anybody using this much in actual rank play and i don't hi highly recommend you guys use it in rank play as well so if i got this right now another copy i would soul trap this and add it to my soul gems to summon something better this card got a little bit of a nerf they raised the magical cost i'm not saying to soul trap it or anything but man this was a great card but they not nerfed it a little bit everything else these then i used to have three of these this card used to actually be an epic card and it was so powerful before in the beta they increased it up to be a legendary card so now that's a legend card getting three of these is going to be hard but you really don't need to run more than two of them but thieves then people will tell you about monks and thieves then it's insane pillifer is one of the best abilities in the game um listener you should every deck if i could put a listener in the deck i would Put listener combo him with a card like right here close call I have done this guys close call and listener is your best friends guys close call and listener are your best friends so listener never get rid of this card if you're playing an agility deck you're gonna have this in your deck like if you don't I would be surprised it's a very good legendary overall all right let's get back over to legendaries and move on over there and we're in endurance right here and endurance is another one of those things that's really hard to pick a card that i could recommend to soul trap and that's what i'm doing right here i'm recommending if you had to soul trap a legendary creature which one would it be and i would have to say it's bone colossus it's not because it's a bad card in any way it's just that recently they changed what the classification of skeletons and undead and stuff like that actually meant so for me bone colossus is one of those cards that yes is great when you could get it but if i had to pick one card that i would get right now i would get rid of if it's this this card actually can hang up out a lot and i'm going to add this to my deck as soon as you guys see this is very much like the willpower side of things where i like almost every card that's available so i like all of them but if i had to pick one it'd be bone colossus that's just the pick i would pick and for dual attributes the only dual attribute card i would say you could soul trap and feel nothing bad at all is her like i understand why she's a she's useful but as a six cost card and it's one one with lethal that is just it's just not good enough it's just plain and simple not good enough for my situation that when i had her i soul trapped her immediately because i was like mm, girl i like what you could do i could see the, the the strength of you if you could get powered up but uh, yikes it's very rare that i see her becoming like a game changer it's, it's, it's happened but this card needs a buff this card either needs to cost four magicka or she needs to gain some defense i'm not sure what the developers will do if anything and i understand why they don't do anything because you summon her and she deals one damage and that one damage is obviously lethal so you could take out something pretty big but she causes She's basically a piercing javelin that stays on the field that's that's how i consider her she's a piercing javelin without prophecy that stays on the field when you summon her i would get rid of her every other one i would keep and in fact if i had to recommend you guys card to get immediately she's a very uh, powerful card for willpower and intelligence i'm gonna add her to my deck very soon as well and let's go on over to the good the mighty the neutral now 
O'Haven, a powerful card. I've had this card three times already. <laughs> the first time I got it early on in the game, I soul, soul trapped it to gain um, to gain some soul gems early on in the game. This is when I didn't know much about the game, and I was like, I need some soul gems. So I soul trapped it, some other cards. Then I got rid of it again, and then I got it again, and I, yeah, basically I did it a few times. I really shouldn't have, but now to the point that it's a central card. Like, I think it's a card that you really should keep and not do what I was doing, but I was new to the game, didn't understand how things work, and I just couldn't, I wasn't surviving to the point that I was ever using this card, but now that I have more cards to support me lasting longer games, as I learned, I say this is a card you're actually going to want to have, because this is a game changer card, its effect is unbelievable, combo this with close call, return it to your hand, is absolutely amazing. The card that every single body wants to soul trap right now is a Doran fan, but the they, they won't let you. The developer's not allowing us to do it. You get this as a, war, a reward for getting to rank 1 in Solar Arena. So as you guys saw, I got the Solar Arena, and then I yeah, got it twice. So I have two of these, and I can't Soul Trap them. Um, never get rid of Mundus Stone. This is a key card, basically meaning that this card is good in any deck. Like, I can't figure out a deck that you couldn't say, like, hey, this is pretty darn useful. But, um, yeah, if you get it on the field... If you gain stuff like Drain or Ward or Lethal, it could change the match for you. Wabajak, you don't need this. I've had two of them. I Soul Trap one. You just need one of them, basically. It's a fun card to have, and there's ways to increase its uses. So, fun card. You don't need it, but it's a fun card to have. I say keep it around. Um, Altar of Despair, you get from a collection. You don't need all three. In fact, I could Soul Trap one right now and not feel bad at all. I personally don't need more than two at a time, but I haven't decided if I'm going to... I'm not going to Soul Trap it because... If I ever figure out a way to reason to have three of them in a deck, I might want to just do it for fun. And as you guys know, I'm a YouTuber and I like making fun decks, so I might find a deck out there that I want to put three of these in later down the line. Orb. The Orb is a card that I just don't find useful because you put a copy of a random creature from your opponent's deck in your hand. And as it's a creature, um, random card in your deck, it's not a creature. Like, if it was like a creature, if I could be specifically that I wanted a creature, because sometimes... If it's an action, those actions won't be useful for you guys, or an item, it might be not useful. Like, if it was like, put a random creature from your opponent deck in my hand, I'll be so more useful for this. And as a 6 magical cost, I just don't like this as a way to draw cards. There's a lot of other ways to draw cards, so I would say Soul Trap this immediately. Um, Go Brand, keep this around. This card has a lot of combo abilities, so I say it's a good card, and I already talked about O'Haven. So yeah, there it goes. That's been a very long video talking about Soul Trapping and soul gems i know that a lot of this information will change over time so just be noted guys just make sure you stay up to date with the updates for this game i will make sure i have news on that because i'm sure some of these systems will change there'll be more legendaries added but what i just did right there was want to explain which legendaries you could get rid of early game and not feel too bad about but there definitely are some key legendaries you just just not want to get like don't get rid of relentless raider you will think of a deck to use it with don't get rid of Supreme. You will think of a deck to use her with. Don't get rid of... <clears throat> sorry here. Don't get rid of a card like Mirak, the Blood Dragon. You will think of a deck to use that with. I'm just picking one card from every legend. The Burgula. Come on. Drain, Pillifer. This is this is epic. Nest of Vipers. I like. Not a lot of people use it these days, but I like it. And Blood Magic Lord. And all... Like, this is just deck. Is, this legend. Like, this is just amazing. All oh, this is just amazing. But... Don't get rid of these two. Definitely not. And don't get rid of her once you get her. She's good. Don't get rid of him multiple times like my dumbass did. <laughs> Hope you guys enjoyed the video. I'll be back with more daily. Peace out.